Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Reshape Media. Today I'm going to do the impossible for you. I'm basically going to show you how you can decompile and recompile your SWF without actually touching your SWF. I know it sounds odd, doesn't it? So let's just get started right away. Uh, first things first, what you should actually do is visit reshapemedia.com slash ftml slash learn slash runtime hyphen libraries. I know the actual path is a bit long, but you can actually see it here. Um, just actually visit it. What it will do is give you the general information for actually creating runtime libraries and how you can use them in FTML. Now, the information that is on the site itself is the base versions of the actual libraries themselves. There are two methods which you can use. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is actually the advanced method. But you can read through the information on the site. You will basically have information on how you can create a library element, which is located here. And with this library element, what you can do is actually assign it an SWF file and a manifest MXML file. What it will do is take basically the objects from the MXML, sorry, from the SWF file, and you will actually be able to reuse them. You know, you'll notice in the packages in the flash file, flame, this is the object that we're actually reusing. And you can actually reuse these objects as much as you'd like. Now, in the advanced tutorial, we're going to show you how you can do this on page without actually including an additional MXML file, which you can see here. Now, using the library element, you need to include your SWF file and your MXML file for it to work. Now, let's continue with the advanced tutorial. For the advanced tutorial, what we're going to do is basically show you how you can turn any SWF file into a live runtime library. Now, this is not like Adobe's RSL libraries. This is a bit different. It's a bit more simplified. So what we can do is actually just get started right away. The first things that we're going to need on our HTML page. Now, assuming that you've read our Getting Started Guide, this should be a bit familiar. But what you can do is visit reshapemedia.com slash FTML, and there's a link to our Getting Started Guide. Um, now, basic requirements that we'll need is our actual namespaces. The only two that we're going to be using in this example is the FTML and the MXML namespace. Uh, the next thing that we need is our style sheet link. Now, for this example, rather than embedding the iframe, we're going to simply use uh, the JS script. It's located on reshapemedia.com. This is something new. It's not included in any of the previous tutorials, so you can actually test it out for yourself. The next step that we're going to do, uh, this is a bit different. Normally, what we do is we add a container as our main element before adding sub-elements inside FTML. Um, but what this does is this actually treats the page like HTML, so each element will render below one another as you add them in the child list. What we actually want to do is we want to treat it like Flash just for our testing. So what we're going to do is rather than use container, we're going to use content. Okay, so let's get started. What we need now is a Flash file that we're actually going to use as our runtime library. Now, rather than create one, I'm going to visit wonderfl.net a great site for creating flash files on the fly if you either don't have flex or you just want to do it on the fly. Um, the one I've chosen really quick is this name. I'm not even going to say it out. It's way too long. Uh, what it does basically is it bounces balls. So if we just play the effect, what we'll see is balls bouncing on the screen. Okay, cool. So stop. So now assuming that you've downloaded the file, uh, what you'll get is you'll basically get an action script file which looks exactly like the text that you're reading here. Now, the unfortunate thing is what this has is it has class objects which are denoted in the same package. Now, ActionScript, well, Adobe themselves, they discourage this for certain reasons. I'm not going to get into it. So what we've done, assuming that you've uh, downloaded the file and you're familiar with uh, Flex itself, we've actually created a library package which will contain our bouncing ball. This is the exact same class structure as on the site itself. I simply gave it a different name. And we also updated our ball and juggler. I gave it a package. This is random just based on the user that created it. And what we also have is an action script runtime project. And what this project will do is basically use the library that we've created for it and actually add the object to it. Now, once this compiles, what we'll get is the bouncing ball effect. Same thing that we actually have on wonder.fl. Great, so works perfectly. So now all we have to do is take this file. Now you'll notice in our bin debug it actually outputs the SWF file. Take the SWF file, drop it on your host, um, whatever your web host is. Now once you take the SWF file main and assuming that it's been placed on your actual server, 
All you need to do is simply add a library meta tag for the actual SWF file. Now, this is also something brand new. And basically, the meta tag looks like this. So the name you would give is library FTML, and the content is the actual location to the main SWF file. Now, the next step that we're going to do is now that we have these objects, you'll note that our actual class path is fl.wander.freddy. This is where we contain the objects that we want to reuse. Now, if we go back to our HTML file, that's simply all we have to create. We add the object. Now, you'll note that the package name, Freddy, denotes wonder.fl.freddy, which is exactly what we have in our Flex library. Now, the XML namespace can be added anywhere. It doesn't have to be added on the object. It could be placed at the very top or actually simply in the content. As long as it's in a parent of the object itself, then it can be placed anywhere. So now, once this is actually active, sorry, let's just show what it is without it. So that's our SWF file. OK, so now we've actually noted that the libraries have loaded. So now we can begin to add our objects. Now that we add the bouncing ball, Now you'll note that the actual object itself is now apparent within FTML, and it's actually now rendered as an FTML object. So we can use it just like MXML. So if we want to change properties, we can simply save the file, refresh the page. Now, you'll notice from the example, the alpha basically changed, but the width itself was not affected. This is not due to an error in FTML, but rather with the actual class object itself. If we go back to the bounce ball, uh, we'll actually notice that it has no width or height property. So basically changing it will not affect anything. The object that it uses is an actual juggler. And we'll note that the juggler itself has predefined properties when rendering. Now, the reason why we saw a full screen ball originally was because we did not define a width and a height of the actual SWF. But if we go back to our main file that we created, which is our runner, and we actually denote that in the SWF properties, what we'll see is that the actual SWF size will be exactly the same, well, the actual object size, I'm sorry, exactly the same as the ones we used in FTML. Now, the width is never affected simply because these balls are created by scripting itself. So what we can do is we can actually now go and let's, for instance, say we want to just use a ball property. So if we look in our file, ball is still within the same actual package. So we can just go to our HTML file and rather than bounce ball, Let's add ball. Uh, let's basically make sure that we can see the object. And let's refresh our page. So there we go. Now we have an actual ball element from the file. So in essence, what we could do is we could actually recreate the juggler through FTML, simply because we can add any property we'd like to the ball now that it's basically rendered in FTML. So let's go and test that out. Let's say, for instance, rather than rather than change the alpha property directly as a basic node, what we can do is add script. So 
Oh, well, let's change the alpha, I guess. Let's go back, refresh our page. I know that we can actually see through the object now. So technically, we can also not just add scripting, but we can also add tweens. Now, let's assume you want to take this a bit further and maybe repeat some class objects a few times. So let's create a few balls. Uh, let's change the X property so we can actually see it. Save our page, refresh. Now you'll see the three class objects that we created, which were actually three balls. Now they're actually restricted to how the object itself is constructed. I guess in the actual file, they denote colors randomly on the ball itself when it's created, so we get that effect as well. Um, if you want to add FTML properties such as our commands package, what you'll need to do is rather than use it on the object itself, because with the object you're restricted to how the object behaves, you can actually wrap the object in an FTML object. So basically, let's wrap it in a container. I know that might have sounded a bit confusing, but I'll just show you really quickly what I mean. So what we did was we wrapped our local object, which is what we created in our Flex project, within an FTML object, so a container itself. Now what we can do is we can actually assign anything from our commands package. So let's add the namespace required for our commands. And let's actually add a quick event listener. Uh, what we're going to listen for is the mouse over event. Okay, so when the mouse overs, let's give it a basic tween. And let's tween its Y value, actually, to 400. Let's give it that. OK, so now basically what we've done is we've wrapped it in an FTML object, which is our container. We've given the container an event listener. And we're basically going to assign a tween to it when the mouse overs the object. The container itself will contain the ball. So let's actually move the container space. You don't need to position the ball once it's inside the container. And what this should do is basically tween the object downwards. So let's save our page. Let's refresh. And let's mouse over. And there we go with our tween. Now you'll see how simple it is to actually reuse any object within your SWF file. I used a very basic one with three packages, but imagine if you have multiple class objects, you don't have to recompile your SWF file for every change that you need. You can use FTML and you can reuse every object within your SWF file in brand new ways. So reshapemedia.com dot well dot com slash FTML. Check it out, give it a try. <laughs> it's a brand new way to learn Flash.